come up to you and tell you about something that you've been doing your whole life but they tell you you've been doing it wrong? This is one of those days. How do you do karaoke? The answer to that is wrong. You're doing it wrong. There are several rules to a superb karaoke experience and I'm here to share those rules with you so you can maximize your enjoyment and let's be honest, awesomeness in the karaoke room. So without further ado, the 10 karaoke rules. Rule number one, get yourself ready. Going to karaoke is like going to a concert that you're holding. Even if you're going alone, which is totally an okay thing, it's not pathetic, it's, um, it's... Rule number two, make a list of the songs you know how to sing. Now I know this may sound really stupid, but it's a great idea because when you get in that karaoke room, sometimes you just can't think of which song to sing next. So having a nice karaoke mix on whatever music player or phone you have is really handy. It's especially fun when you just hit it and shuffle and then boom, I'm gonna sing Jean d'Arc's Gaia. The phone decrees it. The point is when you're stuck and you don't know what to sing or you're sick of singing the same song, let the list decide. Lists solve everything. Rule number three, snacks. Certain karaoke places cost a hefty bunch for food and drinks and some don't even allow you to bring any in. That's why you sneak them in. Come on, you did it to the movie theater, you can do it to a karaoke place. The alternative to it is find an awesome place that doesn't care what you bring in. For example, my place is called Joyland. I have brought everything from a few sodas from the kombini to entire meals from Cocoichi's. And they don't care. This is why Joyland is the best. It's also the cheapest place I know. Which brings us to rule number four. Find a cheap place. Karaoke places that look fancy pretty much are fancy and they will charge you the fancy price And just because a karaoke place looks a little bit run down and possibly run by the Yakuza Does not mean that it is not an awesome place to jam Just don't make a credit relationship with the owners and you're fine It's got the same songs that the fancy place does Who cares if the seats are ripped or the walls are chipped you don't need those things to karaoke. You need the microphone and the machine as well. But that's all you need. Heck, I don't even need the microphone. I'm really loud. Rule number five. This actually isn't a rule. I'm just gonna show you how to actually sign up for a room. The first thing you do when you enter a karaoke place is tell them how many hours you want. Michelle and I usually go for about seven hours, which earns us a lot of looks of surprise, horror, but a little bit of respect. If you're gonna try to get up to that level, make sure you train yourself. Don't just go right into it because you'll kill your voices. Start off with three hours and work your way up. If you continue signing up for a room, they'll probably need to see some form of ID to make sure you're not a middle school student because you shouldn't be there if you're a middle school student. You should be at home studying. Also, in case you mess anything up, then they have your information to blame you. And then you have to fill out the rest of the form, which is usually just your name, your number, and the age of everybody in the room. Now, some places don't let you choose a room, but in Joyland, they do. They have a whole little display of rooms for you to choose from. Pick the biggest room that doesn't cost you extra. Joyland doesn't charge extra. Again, they're super awesome. Other places do. But pick the biggest room because jam space is key. Rule number six, set up the jam space. Some places have tables and chairs that are just in the way. How are you supposed to rock out to Bohemian Rhapsody when there's a table blocking your head bagging? Push that stuff to the side and maximize your stage area. Use those tables for a sophisticated refreshments area. Before I begin the box rules, let's look at how you set up the machine. Now there are several different kinds of karaoke machines. Some let you sign up to have this cute little avatar and you compete with the entirety of Japan for the best scores on the song. We didn't do that yesterday, we just did the regular one. Depends on which room you pick. We picked the one without it apparently. Now in the system we were working on, there were several scary buttons for how to search for a song. You can also use the books, but one who uses books anymore. The first two ways are searching by singer or by song title. You can search by genre, duet, and then you can search by languages. Most Japanese karaoke boxes have options for Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and English. Now for the box rules. Rule number eight, no hogging the mic. Start off your karaoke experience by doing some jogging with your friends to find a healthy rotation. This way everyone has equal chances to sing. Only take over someone's spot if they want to sit one out. Don't just grab the machine and start putting in everything on your iPod. Rule number nine, get up. Take the stage. This is your episode of Glee, except a billion times better because Glee sucks. The only time it is okay to sit down in a karaoke room if it's one of those mellow songs that you snap your fingers to. That's the only time, okay? 
No exceptions. And finally, rule number 10, rock out. Karaoke is not about who is the best singer, it's about who's the best at rocking out. Just have fun in the room. When it's not your turn to sing, do proper backup for other people. Flail around with the tambourines. And when it's your turn, hope other people understand these rules and they do the same for you. And that's it. Now you know how to karaoke the right way. If you have any further questions or comments, you can put them down below on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, or video, and I will see you next time, cuties. Bye! And with all the force of a great typhoon, we are.